comfrey is a, an extremely useful plant. It uh, is very high in protein and also in mineral content. As you can see, the chickens have not expressed as much of a preference for comfrey. If you had ducks and geese here, they would be chewing that comfrey down to nubs. They really love comfrey. And so that can be a, an important uh, high protein feed for geese and ducks. Comfrey is a very tough plant with big fleshy roots that go down eight or 10 feet. And so even if they eat it down to the crown, it will come right back. The uh, resilient poultry uh, keeper is always looking for plants that can make a contribution. That, and, and that includes a lot of things that we call weeds. So a couple of them that I see right here are yellow dock and dandelion. One reason I wanted to point out these two plants in particular is that as all other uh, green foods have died off, green plants, uh, I dig these out by the roots and throw them to the chickens in the winter housing. Oh, okay. Very high quality uh, plant nutrition. The uh, uh, dandelion is particularly high in uh, protein. And the roots are good for their liver. Yes, they, and, the, and they will eat the dandelion root. These two plants are good to keep in mind for that lean time of the year when there's not much green feed available. And speaking of green feed in the winter, one way to uh, produce some green feed is to sprout. And the book discusses a couple of approaches to sprouting. One is simply to use a bucket system that I describe in the book for sprouting to the point that uh, the seeds have germinated and started producing all of those highly active enzymes and vitamins that result from the germination process, but without needing to have a tray to grow them in and, and, and bring on little uh, grass leaves. Uh, which green up in the sun. So you can use the bucket method just to break the uh, dormancy uh, uh, of the seeds, get them to germinate, start producing that uh, high quality enzymes and, and, and vitamins. And the other option is to use a tray. Let's say you have a hoop house uh, that can give these uh, enough protection to actually germinate and start growing into little plants like wheat or rye or oats in the wintertime and let those green up in the sun and then feed. Either one of those approaches is just fine depending on your own circumstances. Okay. We've been talking mostly about uh, plant foods, green plant foods, but uh, there are any number of seed foods that you can exploit that I discuss a good deal in the book from small grain crops that you can grow and maybe even let the birds self-harvest rather than going to the trouble of harvesting them and threshing them and storing them. Mm -hmm. uh, sunflowers, corn, sorghum, there are a lot of options for growing seed grains and of course they, if they have the access to pasture they're, they're self-harvesting a lot of uh, wild seeds. I really think that the makers of commercial feed have created the idea that balancing the chicken's nutrition is a very fine balancing act indeed. And, and the more we think that it's a very fine balancing act, the more we may be inhibited from doing a lot of experimentation. I really believe that the more natural feeds the chickens have access to, the more they're going to find a natural balance. Is there an upper limit to crickets in the diet? I really don't think we need to be concerned about that. There may be an upper limit, but I don't think the chicken is going to hit it. And in the same way, uh, if you start working with uh, earthworms and black soldier fly grubs uh, to supplement the chicken's diet, you're really not likely to hit a, a, some sort of maximum where you, uh, their, their diet is uh, unbalanced by eating too many earthworms. Mm -hmm. I really doubt that is going to happen at just about any le level that you're able to feed.